hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel hope you enjoyed last two of my videos that i recently uploaded so today we'll understand about the concept of antigenicity or immunogenicity because the properties of immunogenicity is the central to the understanding of immunology so it will be interesting to understand which one is correct and what's the difference between antigenicity versus immunogenicity so let us talk about the details of immunogenicity and antigenicity so what do you mean by antigenicity so antigenicity it is the ability to induce humoral or cell mediated immunity which means that an immunogen will basically induce a b cell to become either effector b cells or memory b cells and an immunogen in turn induce a t cell to become and effector T cells and memory T cells which in other words means that an immunogen will induce a B cell to evoke humoral immune response and an immunogen will induce a T cell to evoke cell mediated immune response now what is an antigenicity so antigenicity is a phenomenon that is defined by the ability of a molecule to combine with the final products of the humoral or cell mediated immune response regardless of the fact whether they can induce immunity or not. So if the antibodies are produced an antigen should be able to bind to that antibody or immunoglobulins or the B cell receptor and in case of the T cell an antigen should be able to bind with the T cell receptor coupled with an MHC molecule. So therefore we can conclude that almost all immunogens are antigens but all antigens may not be immunogen. A good example is a heptin. So heptins are very small molecules that can serve as an antigen but they by themselves do not evoke any immune response and therefore they are not considered to be immunogens. However, for the practical purpose the term immunogen and antigen they are used interchangeably. That means in most of the experiments you will see that e the term immunogen is used as well as the antigens are used so that is why they are used interchangeably now let us talk about the properties of immunogen number one is the foreignness so greater the phylogenetic distance of a particular molecule under consideration more is the structural disparity and more is the foreignness and therefore more is the foreignness more is the immunogenicity that it evokes now second property is the molecular size of an immunogen or antigen so greater the molecular size more is the immunogen so 100,000 Dalton is a very good size in order to serve a particular molecule as immunogen and a size of 5,000 5, to 10,000 Dalton is it's a considerably less immunogen. Next is the chemical composition and heterogeneity. For example, homopolymer serves as less Im serves as poor immunogen as compared to a molecule which is chemically complex. The next is the susceptibility to antigen processing and presentation. This means that a molecule must be able to be recognized by a particular cell so that the molecule can be degraded efficiently and presented by its MHC molecule on the cell surface. Even if all of the properties are important but they, they alone cannot determine whether a molecule could serve as an immunogen or not. So the biological system in which the immunogen is going to be introduced is also important. For example, the genotype of the recipient animal. So if uh, one strain of particular mouse show was very high kind of uh, titer of antibody against a particular immunogen that does not mean that another strain of mouse will also show similar kind of immune response. So they may differ based on their genetic constitution and in if you if you point out the MHC molecule is finally responsible to determine whether a particular molecule will serve as immunogen or not. Then comes the immunogen doses and route of administration of that particular immunogen. This means 
that an insufficient dose of immunogen may not serve as an immunogen and the route of administration for example whether you are injecting a particular immunogen through subcutaneous mode or through intravenous or in the uh, for example any other method so this will determine so depending upon how you introduce the immunogen to the system will determine whether the system will show a high response or not the next is the presence or absence of a particular substance called adjuvants so basically adjuvants are substances that are mixed with the antigen or immunogen and injected to the system so adjuvants are often used to boost the immune system so the question is that how does this adjuvant function so there are many mechanisms postulated mechanisms by which the adjuvants are functions for example it is said that antigen persistence is prolonged or they may even induce the co-stimulatory signals or sometimes they cause local inflammation or maybe sometimes the non-specific proliferation of the lymphocytes are stimulated so this basically this chart shows you the name of some common adjuvants for example freons incomplete adjuvants or freons complete adjuvant and there are adjuvants called aluminium potassium sulfate and there is also mycobacterium tuberculosis which can also serve as an adjuvant and there are for example bacterial lipopolysaccharide synthetic polynucleotide etc however so these adjuvants have different mechanisms using which they boost up the immune system for example the freons incomplete adjuvant or freons complete adjuvant they boost the immune system by increasing the persistence of the antigen to the site of injection and then for example the bacterial polysaccharide so these also serve as an ad adjuvant and the mechanism is that it enhances a co-stimulatory signal then the synthetic polynucleotide so as you can see it can stimulates the lymphocytes non-specifically so these are some of the examples and mechanisms by which the adjuvants actually boost the immune system so that you get high titer of antibody now let us understand what is an epitope generally the antibody molecules that do not bind to the entire region or the whole region of an immunogen or antigen so what happens to that is that the antibodies or immunoglobulins they bind to discrete sites present on the immunogen or antigen that means those discrete sites which are present on the immunogen or antigen are immunologically active so that they can interact with the T cell receptor or B cell receptor so these discrete sites are called epitopes so basically the epitopes are present on antigen and because the properties of B cell epitopes and the epitopes for T cell receptors are different so we first should discuss about the properties of B cell epitopes and then we'll move to the properties of T cell epitopes importantly in order to serve as a B cell epitope an epitope must be able to form weak non-covalent interaction with immunoglobulin or B cell receptor next the B cell epitopes on native proteins generally are composed of hydrophilic amino acids on the protein surface because these antigen epitopes are always exposed to the solvent which is inside the cell and they and therefore the amino acids that make up the epitopes are hydrophilic B cell epitopes can be of two types the one is sequential and the another is non sequential or conformational epitope so what is a sequential e epitope basically in this case the amino acids that make up the epitope are present as contiguous amino acids in the primary structure of proteins and in the case of non sequential epitope the amino acids are not present as contiguous amino acid in the primary structure of the protein they rather they are brought together in close proximity in their three dimensional structure and B cell epitopes must be located in the flexible regions of an immunogen so that they can little bit show mobility so in order to interact with the immunoglobulin molecule now there could be some epitopes which are immunodominant by saying immunodominant we mean that there are few epitopes as compared to the other epitopes from the same antigen molecule which induce more pronounced immune response 
Now let us talk about the properties of T cell epitope. The epitopes for T cell receptor are always recognized in the form of a trimolecular complex. That means one molecule or one epitope and then the T cell receptor and the MHC molecule. So this form a trimolecular complex as opposed to a binary complex formed in the case of B cell epitope. Now the interesting thing is that T cell do not recognize the soluble native antigen. Then what does it recognize? It recognizes an antigen which is processed into antigenic peptides and then displayed by the MHC molecule. And an antigen displayed by the MHC molecule can be recognized by the T cell receptor. So it is clear from the discussion that the antigen processing is involved to generate a peptide that interacts specifically with MHC molecules. Finally, the epitopes which are recognized by the T cell receptors are often internal. After discussing the properties of B cell and T cell receptor, it will be easy to understand the comparison of antigen recognition by T cells and B cells. That means there are differences between the B cell and T cells by which they recognize the antigen. For example, in the case of B cells, the complex which is formed is called a binary complex because the immunoglobulin and antigen are involved. However, in the case of T cell, it's a ternary complex because antigen, MHC molecule and the T cell receptors are involved. The B cell can bind with an antigen which is soluble, right? But in the case of T cell, it does not bind with a soluble antigen, rather the T cell can bind with an antigen only when it is displayed by MHC molecule. That means the MHC molecule is not necessary in order to form a functional interaction between the immunoglobulin and antigen. But this is essential in the case of T cell. In case of B cell, all the proteins, polysaccharides and lipids can serve as antigen. And in case of T cell also, although mostly the proteins serve as antigen, However, there are examples where lipids or glycolipids can also serve as an antigen. So the B cell epitopes are hydrophilic and therefore they are accessible. And the epitopes are either sequential or non-sequential. In case of T cells, the epitopes are internal. And produced by processing of antigen by the cellular machinery and then they are bound to the MHC molecule so that it can display the antigen and present to a T cell. I hope that you have understood the concept of immunogenicity or antigenicity. Let me know if you have any questions, please do write in the comment section. Bye bye till then.